here we are again. Come through another little town. It's called Penang. It is home of the Australia's biggest windmill. Check that big boy out. So if you're coming into Penang, coming from the west to the east, you just turn past the service station on the left and you'll see all the windmills and it'll bring you out to the Comet Park here. It's a blade off one of the windmills. Comet. Monitor SA. Check out that way. Cool one. Adelaide Challenge Windmill. Horwood Sectional Windmill 16, number 178, made 1884 to 1894. Oh, Anna Creek Station, South Australia. Some cool photos. Pretty cool, actually. Around the car. Roof structure is a 17 foot Southern Cross windmill fan. The walls are from a 5,000 gallon squatters tank. The Penong windmill story is told by Tim Hardy and Bob Oates. I won't read it all for you guys. Friday over, get together. The windmill idea started while having a few social hiccups in Tim and Jenny Hardy's Rural Supplies Workshop 16 odd years ago. Bob and Jill Oates, longtime friends and neighbours, had a set up caravan park next door to the rural supplies, and both couples felt there was a need for an attraction in the semi remote town of Penong, South Australia. So there we go, it all started in a backyard. So stop in if you're passing, have a bit of a read. Something's really big, the comment, funding history, then until now. Oh look, you can find them on Facebook as well. Penong Windmill Museum. Good. Tag them in some photos. That's amazing. Well, there you have it. Penong Windmills. So guys, we've just uh, come into Seduna, and uh, as you come into Seduna, there's a quarantine. So it's not back at the border, it's a couple hundred k's in. So they took our one banana, and they took our lettuce, and some potatoes, and tomatoes. So just make sure, yes, when you're coming into South Australia, they do check you, just not at the border, which is bizarre. So yeah, it, um, be warned. But I suppose it's good though, um, because Take if you are coming across from Western National Australia Highway and you're free 81. camping, you get to use those things and while you're stopping before you actually get to here, to the shops. So, uh, Dave and I have driven through to a place called Minipa or Minipa, I don't know how to pronounce it. Um, we've stopped off at Apex Park here this is just a sign in the park saying what's in the town, supermarket, motel, butcher, post office, all that sort of thing. Um, but is it free camp here? There is a donation box, I'm guessing for gold coin donation. But it is called the Apex Park. It's the home of the concrete crapper apparently. So over here we have the concrete crapper. We've just pulled up in there for the night. No one else is here. There's rubbish bins around, picnic tables, a nice big area. Here's your donation box. Let's just pop some coins in there or however much you think necessary. Now this is the concrete crapper. Pretty cool. Hopefully they're clean. Let's check it out. 
Please close the door after use. Not too bad. Flushing toilet, sink, paper towel. What's this picture on this side? Oh, check that out. It's pretty cool. And another one around here. <laughs> Must be the same on this side. Yeah, not too bad for a park. But anyway, there you have it. Free camp or small donation, Apex Park, mini pa or mini pa, however you say it. This is us set up here for the night. Morning guys, uh, we woke up this morning, had a pretty good little sleep in that uh, free camp, didn't hear too many trucks, there was a couple but it was not a drama at all, um, had a good feed at the pub last night, their uh, salad was something different, it had curried egg and it had uh, pasta salad in it, lettuce, it was actually quite nice for someone like myself that doesn't like salad. And a 400 gram rump steak and Ros had the chicken parmy. The prices were pretty reasonable too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, country feed. But this morning we've woken up, we're just coming, it's only 15 k's out. And had I realised last night, I would have come and stayed out here. But what we did was we camped in the free camp, went to the pub and then found out about this joint. <laughs> but uh, it's called Pildapa Rock. Now it's a, I think they call it a monolith. Um, which is where part of it sticks out of the ground, but there's two, three times the size underground, very much like Ayers Rock. Apparently there's only two of them in Australia, and this is the other one, Ayers Rock being the other. Um, so we're coming out here this morning, it's 15 k's from town, bit of dirt gravel road, very good road, and uh, yeah, we're gonna climb up on top of Pildapa Rock and see what's out here. Have a look. But we are in South Australia and the temperature outside at the moment is 15 degrees. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Bit of a shock coming down from the um, from Broome and the West Australia coast there. One thing I'd like to say guys is uh, we did our first live video the other day and um, it was quite interesting. We were only going to get on there for 10, 15 minutes and it turned out that we're on there for uh, an hour 25. Um, interacting with you guys, the followers, had some funny questions thrown in, some funny stuff, banter, it was good. And uh, since then, we've had quite a lot of uh, comments and feedback yeah really good comments saying that um, we're not plastic and all that sort of <laughs> stuff well I don't know I guess we're not <laughs> yeah, there's no Botox in Ross's lips or boobs anyway <laughs> But thank you, thank you very much for the kind words. We um we actually really enjoyed it. But next time we'll work out which way to face that um that camera. Already that, done. The iPad. I've gone in and I've changed the settings on the. Uh, it's not an iPad. It's a Samsung. Oh, sorry, it's I a Samsung. I refuse to use Apple. Um. So yeah, I've changed it on the tablet now, and uh, we're good to go for the next one. So we're nearly at uh, Pill Dapper Rock. It's coming along this dirt road. Another. 500 meters, and we'll turn. You can free camp out here. Um, I think there's like picnic tables and stuff like that, but here's the sign. Welcome to Pildaba Rock. So here we are guys at um, Pildapa Rock. Let's check it out. So no camping within 30 metres of the rock. We've just pulled up here to have a look around. There's a few campers here. Looks very similar to like 
wave rock on this side. Now there's some picnic tables, barbecue, which is out of order, a couple of rubbish bins. Pulled out the rock. This large granite outcrop dome is an exposed part of a granite pluton which intruded the crust of rocks at a great depth of five kilometres. The rock shows joining in a number of directions, all of which have contributed to its weathering and current shape. On the surface are features such as pits, deep and narrow, peens, broad and shallow, grammars, rock basins, and rill and water-worn grooves. The wave-shaped flared slope was caused by moist soil in contact with the rock, causing the granite to weather inwards as the soil levels lowered and more granite was exposed. The weathered rock material was removed, leaving a concave surface, wave rock. Yeah, I've got the correct hiking attire. So guys, here we are upon Pilled Up a Rock, looking down at the campground. Beautiful countryside. Dave's up the top up there. So guys, on the other side of the rock here, there's another picnic table, barbecue area, another toilet, fire pit in the center there you can have a fire at. Now, it's easier to walk up the top of the rock on this side. It's a lot flatter. That looks pretty cool. There we have it, guys. Pill Dapper Rock. So, guys, that was uh, Dill Papa. Oh, no, oh, how about oh, Pill Dapper? <laughs> Dill Papa. What is it, Dill Papa? Pill, Pill da Dapper. Pill Dapper. You said Dill Papa. <laughs> so, guys, that was uh, Dill. Oh. Pill Dapper. <laughs> hey, look, look. hey, guys, that was uh, Pill Dapper Rock. <laughs> Rosa's still laughing because she can't say it. She says Dapper Pill. <laughs> Come on. Continue on, you're putting this in. Um, yeah, well that was... Uh, so what was it? Dill Papa Rock. No, <laughs> Pill Dapper. Pill Dapper. That was Pill Dapper Rock. Uh, great little uh, free camp if you're out this way. Beautiful views from on top of the rock. What do you think? Yeah, well, at least you wouldn't have the trucks going past on the highway, but had I known that was there, I would have camped here. I yeah. would have camped in where I camped. Well worth it, guys. Well worth it. And it was so it was great to meet a couple of other fellow JBers with their with their uh, caravans. They were from Perth and Queensland. And Queensland. We ran into two JB owners, both Scorpion Stings. Yep. Um, Trevor and Madonna. Lovely to meet you guys. Queensland. And and Kim, Deb, Ken, and Deb. Lovely to meet you guys from as well. West Oz. From West Oz, yeah, from Perth. 
Anyway, today we're heading off to Wards Port Augusta Way and we'll take you along for our journey. So here we are, pulled up in another little small town of Wadena. Wadena. And we've come to check out the cool Australian farmer statue. How cool is that? Their very own farmer statue. What's the go? Australian farmer stylized human form elements. Sun, source of life, wheat and sheep. Do it again. <laughs> Do it again. You're not a Kiwi. <laughs> You're a <tag. laughs> Dave riding the sheep. Get off it! <laughs> so it looks like Wadena is a nice little township here. They've got, you know, hospitals, shops, laundromats, bakeries, supermarkets, roadhouses, tire and auto, whatever you need here in Wadena. And you can stay at the showground. Beautiful little country town. And there's another map of the Gawla Ranges, which looks like a good place to explore as well. Hey guys, so we found this little contraption here and it obviously has a knob on here. You turn it to the numbers. Down here it tells you what the numbers are and what you got to do is give it a bit of a wind up until the story starts. Once the story starts you stop winding. So you just go... Obviously puts power into the machine and it tells you the story of the history of Wadena and District, the attractions, the sculpture's history, the one behind us, the sculpture itself, the dimensions, and the acknowledgements, annual events, and a town message. It's all happening here at the Australian Farmer Sculpture in Wadena. I'm waiting at the doorstep, finally. Another small town. This one is called Kimba, so I've pulled up out the front of the Big Galah. Let us know guys if you've come to the Big Galah, if you've seen him in person. Halfway across Australia, tourist gift shop. Let's go and check out the gift shop. Cool emu here. Kangaroo with a joey. Diesel price here today is $1.97.9. Not bad at all. He's a little emu guy. Oh, look at that table. It's pretty cool. Got the bike underneath. There's a little doggy statue as well. Also in Kimba, you have this beautiful silo art. Next street over from the Big Galah. How cool is that? Amazing. Now we're just off to the hardware shop to grab some bolts for our solar panel that's come a bit loose. And then we'll be on our way. Yes, yeah, so I lost two screws holding the uh, solar panel onto my rhino rack. There's a little bit of a groove that has like a plate under it, and then the bolt bolts into that with some washers. So I just called into um, Home Hardware in Kimber and bought a few little bolts like that with some washers and some uh, spring washers and screwed it in and fixed it up. Now there's no more flapping on the roof. We actually thought it might have been the boat coming a bit loose. So I checked the boat and there was nothing there. And it wasn't until I was driving along we pulled over and yeah, lost two bolts and the whole panel flapping around like this. So I was driving at one stage with my hand out the window holding it down. And Ross told me that I can't keep doing that. So 
I bit the bullet and pulled over and bought some bolts and fixed it up. Next thing I was going to do was just zip tie it. But uh, yeah, no, we fixed it properly. It's all good. On the road, the show goes on. Stood there smiling at me as so many times before. Morning guys. Last night we stayed at um, a free camp here in Spalding at the recreation grounds. Looking over where the camera's pointing now is the toilets. That's where we just pulled up for the night. Some other people we knew just pulled up in front of us. But here at the rec grounds you just drive in. There's tennis courts, you got the sports ground here, but you can camp anywhere around the perimeter of this oval. Just across from the toilets, um, there's a cafe, and next door to the cafe is a pub, which we had dinner at last night. Meals were pretty good. Those Thursday night is $18 snitty night. Behind the toilets over there is a little playground if you've got kids. So this is the little park area. Across the, across the road there's a little cafe and a little general grocery store. Next to that is the hotel. So you've got picnic tables, there's a barbecue, there's some swings for the kids. The toilet block is just there and then you just walk through rubbish bins and then you just walk through to where you pull up for the night. So just a great little overnight stop. So guys I just want to show you around this caravan park we're staying in. It's called Red Cliffs Caravan Park and it's just outside of Mildura. It's a beautiful little park, lovely big sites. Now when you come in the front gate you've got a pull-in bay over to your left. So you can stop there and do your check-in. Reception is over to your right. This is a map of the park. We're actually on site 39 right here. And they're very, very large sites. It's $36 per night for power and water, which is quite reasonable. They've got yeah, dump point, they've got clean amenities. The amenities are actually really, really well looked after. There's a pool here. Guys are just setting up their little Christmas decorations. I'm ready for Christmas. It's a beautiful little area here with the pool. I'm just going to fill the water. Oh, not too bad actually. Nice pool. There's the amenities looking over that way. Just around the park, there's some cabins. There's a massive big oval down there. But these sites here are really nice and big. We're actually over there. Dave's talking to some people at the moment. They've always got their sprinklers going, so it's beautiful and green. There's a camp kitchen in here. There's a barbecue area up in that shed. Hello, how are you? Good. Okay, this is the laundry in here. It's $5 per load. I've got some washing in or bath matting at the moment. And same with the clothes dryer, $5 per load. There's some books up here. So book exchange. If you've got any books that you've, not, that you've finished reading, swap them over. Take you for a walk around this way. More sites over this side, cabins, and this toilet, sink on the outside. Just a lovely little park. And over the back here, so you're back onto a vineyard. It's a beautiful atmosphere. Powered sites all down that way. So these are sites along here, so you're kind of back in on an angle and back in onto the vineyard. We'll have a look over the back. But the grass is just beautiful after being in all that red dirt up north. And there we have it. The vineyard. If you're looking for somewhere to stay in Mildura, or you don't want to ex stay right in the centre of Mildura, about 10-15 minutes out at Redcliffe. 
beautiful. Hey guys, it's that time again. Joke time with Dave. As you know, Ros was in hospital getting her operation, so uh, I was sitting at home all by myself, and would you believe it, the neighbour knocked on my door at 3am in the morning. Luckily, I was still up playing my drums. Catches. <laughs>